So that delectable little work uh, is one of the earliest pieces that uh, Aaron Copland, the iconic composer Aaron Copland wrote. He was all of 20 years old when he wrote it in 1921. Um, it comes from a tiny suite for piano in honor of our tiny desk concert um, called Three Moods. And that mood was jazzy. Um, what's especially interesting about um, this piece is that it shows Copeland having at a very early age a real determination to create what he came to call a recognizably American musical idiom. Um, he spent the, the better part of his career really trying to meld um, American vernacular, uh, jazz, uh, folk, cowboy songs, within a, a concert framework and vocabulary. Um, I'm Michael Boriskin. I'm the artistic and executive director of Copeland House, a creative center for American music that is based right here at Aaron Copeland's longtime home, uh, located about an hour north of New York City in the lower Hudson River Valley. Uh, the Hudson River is just a couple of miles uh, that way. Um, and we thought it would be fun to bring this program of Copeland instrumental works uh, to tiny desk concerts at home from Copeland's home, from Copeland's studio. There, right in front of us, is uh, Copeland's not so tiny desk. Um, the desk and his piano were his two most valued, most important work tools. He spent countless hours at both of them. And so we're delighted to, uh, to visit today um, with a program of Copeland's work from Copeland's house. Um, we want to fast forward now from 1920, 21, about a quarter of a century to the early middle 1940s. Uh, and we're going to jump across the country from New York to Hollywood, where Copeland found himself uh, working on the back lot of the famed Samuel Goldwyn Studios, uh, working um, on the music for a feature film called The North Star. Uh, Copeland was also an Oscar-winning film composer. Um, if you know anything about making movies, you'll know that there's a lot of waiting time involved. And uh, Copeland, always practical and industrious, uh, put the downtime to good use. Uh, he uh, spent the better part of 1943 in Hollywood working on two important, um, important works of his. Uh, one is the piece that we're about to sample, uh, the Sonata for Violin and Piano. And the other was a work that became one of the emblematic American works of the 20th century, the ballet Appalachian Spring with choreographer Martha Graham. Um, the Violin Sonata really shares a lot of musical DNA with Appalachian Spring. Uh, both works uh, have a kind of optimism and humanity and, and a, a real sense of artistic and personal um, uh, purity. Um, this is the only major work uh, that, um, that Copeland wrote for the violin. Uh, we're going to play the opening movement, which, like Appalachian Spring, has a kind of homespun lyricism and a kind of carefree exuberance. And I'm delighted uh, to be doing this with one of the Music from Copeland House Ensemble's principal violinists, Curtis Macomber. We hope you enjoy it.
We're going to fast forward once more from the early mid 1940s to the end of the 1960s, beginning of the 70s. And we're going to jump from Hollywood, not only to New York, but to this very room where Copeland wrote his last major chamber work, a wonderful duo for flute and piano. Um, the Copeland duo became a big success almost as soon as it was premiered and published. It was taken up by flutists all over the world and quickly became a repertory staple. Um, I'm delighted to have um, the chance to play this piece with one of the uh, flutists who took it up uh, early, early on, uh, one of Music from Copeland House Ensemble's uh, regular guest artists, Carol Winsense, um, among America's um, most renowned uh, flutists. Um, we're going to play the second and third movements of the piece. Um, we don't have to introduce it in any way because Copeland succinctly captured the character and the atmosphere of uh, these two movements with his performance direction at the beginning of each uh, movement. The second movement is uh, marked poetic and mournful. And the finale um, is marked lively with bounce.